Hi friends, today I'll be talking on inguinal hernia. I'll be referring to the common questions my patients have regarding this problem. So what is hernia? Hernia is a abnormal protrusion or a swelling which occurs in your stomach. So this mainly occurs when there is a weakness in the abdominal wall muscles. Depending on the area where you have this bulge seen, it can have different names. For example, when you have a swelling near your belly button, it is called as an umbilical hernia. Today, I will be talking more in detail about inguinal hernia, but most of the principles would remain the same for any hernia. So, inguinal hernia is any swelling which you notice on the upper aspect of your thigh. So, generally, this type of a hernia is more common for men rather than women. Even women can get it, but the propensity for which they will be developing this would be quite low. So men get it at a more common rate because anatomically there is a defect over there and that tends to become weaker for various reasons. So how does one know that they have a hernia? Whenever you notice any bulge which is not normal or sometimes it might not be present on the other side then that is a referred to as a hernia. A lot of the times this bulge would be very small when it starts and gradually with time it starts to become bigger and when it starts and initially when you start noticing a bulge you might not have any pain associated with it but as time goes on then you might start developing some amount of pain even if it becomes a little complicated then you have some amount of vomiting associated with it so the ideal scenario would be to get the hernia repaired much prior to any of these alarming symptoms would arise in because the morbidity associated after these symptoms come in is quite high. So once you know or you suspect that you have a inguinal hernia, what would you next do? You obviously would go to a doctor. The doctor would examine you and he would tell you what the diagnosis is, whether it is a hernia or some other problem. Hernia is more of a clinical diagnosis, but generally any patient whom we diagnose with hernia, we always put them to a sternous history which would tell us any precipitating factor is there or not on why they could have developed the inguinal hernia. Second, they will always be subjected to an ultrasound. The ultrasound is not to confirm the diagnosis. It is more to rule out any precipitating factors or some other problem associated along with the hernia. For example, in men, we always tend to see what the size of the prostate is and the post void residual urine quantity, whether it is quite high or it is quite low. Because if they are associated with any of these problems, only those problems need correction first before a hernial surgery unless the hernia is complicated. So next, after coming to the diagnosis and confirming the diagnosis of the hernia, what are the options available? We have a lot of options which are being tried out and people are cheated every day saying that you can wear a small cloth over there or you can just wear some compression device or a belt. But generally these don't tend to help the problem. Mainly because if you recall, I told you a hernia occurs mainly due to the weakness in the abdominal wall muscle. So you can't strengthen the muscle by just tightening something or tying something around it. So what is necessary? The only proven option available all throughout the world right now is to undergo a surgery. So what is the surgery? Whenever we need a surgery for hernia, what we generally do is all the protrusion of the intestine or the fat which has occurred through the weakness is once again brought back into the abdomen. And after that, the area where it is weak, we apply a few sutures to strengthen it. In addition to the sutures, we always apply a mesh, which is a medical grade mesh specifically made for this purpose. The advantage of using this mesh is it will get stuck to the normal muscle wall and also promote more tissue to grow through the mesh. So hence strengthening that particular area. After you starting to use the mesh, now the recurrence rate for a hernia surgery has come down well below 1%. So the mesh is always mandatory unless in certain indications like if you have a liver failure and you have a hernia where you will be putting out a lot of fluid, then a mesh is not advisable. There only an anatomical repair is sufficient. Or if it is a small kid less than 16 years of age, then definitely we won't use a mesh. Only an anatomical repair is good enough. So now, what are the ways to do the surgery? 
Till early 1990s, the only possible way to do a hernia surgery was by an open technique where we will make a small incision in the abdomen. Through the incision, we will do the repair which I elicited a little earlier. Whereas after 1990, now you have laparoscopy which has come in a big way and a lot of patients undergo the surgery through laparoscopy. So what are the advantages and disadvantages for open or laparoscopic surgery? Open surgery is still a very good option but it has a disadvantage compared to laparoscopic surgery. What are those disadvantages? In open surgery you have to make an incision which means more pain and it will definitely leave a bigger scar. Second, the time required for you to recover to your normal work, the blood loss during surgery might be slightly a little higher than when compared to laparoscopic surgery. Whereas in laparoscopic surgery, you just make three small incisions which are just the size of a keyhole and through these incisions, we generally do the surgery. Hence, the pain associated with the surgery is much much less. You have very little blood loss and the recovery time required and your return to work is much more faster compared to an open surgery. In addition to these common benefits which would hold good for any laparoscopic surgery over open surgery, another major advantage with regards to hernia surgery is that in laparoscopic surgery, whenever you have a hernia on both sides, you can do the repair very comfortably with only these three ports. Whereas in open surgery, if you have a hernia on the opposite side, you have to make one more incision on the opposite side in order to get the hernia corrected. That means it will leave you with two incisions on either side and the recovery also is going to be that much more longer. The morbidity associated also is going to be slightly higher. The other major advantage with regards to laparoscopic surgery is that with laparoscopic surgery, if you have a very small hernia which was not diagnosed or found through with regards to your clinical examination or an ultrasound, it can be easily identified with the help of the laparoscope which means you can correct the hernia during the first surgery itself, avoiding an unnecessary surgery at a later time which would save a lot of your time and also it would bring down your cost drastically. So in one surgery you can be very sure that you had hernia only on one side or if you had a hernia on the other side which was incidentally found that can be corrected as well. If you have any more queries with regards to the treatment options available for hernia or what you can do about for a hernia surgery, you can please contact me at Ashwin Hospital. Thank you very much.